Let's talk about grafted apple trees. We've been talking a bit about that recently, and I thought it would be a good topic to have a chat about. Because it's a subject that seems quite tricky and quite confusing, and one of those sort of almost dark arts of gardening. And actually the reality of it is, with a little understanding, it's a thing we can all do, we can save money, we can produce our favourite trees, and we can get a little bit closer to self-reliance, self-sufficiency. And in order to get it right, I want to break the topic into three. And the three parts of knowing about grafting apple trees are why we do it. On the face of it, why don't you just plant an apple pip and get the apple tree that way? It doesn't work very well and we'll cover why. When do we do it? Some kinds of grafting need to be done at a particular type of year, time of year, and we'll cover why that might be, how to tell it's the right time of year. And the third part of this is how do we do it? Now there are many types of graft, and I'm going to show you one initially, a simple one, the one I started with. I don't claim to be the world's expert on grafting. Okay? I am very much in the home steady world a jack of all trades. But I've produced apple trees that we're growing that are producing us apples in the way we want. And if I can show you that an idiot like me can do it, trust me, after three videos, I believe you will be able to do it too. And honestly, it's a subject where once you get past the fear, it's something we can all do. So let's look at why we did it. If I planted that apple pit that I mentioned earlier, why wouldn't that grow into an identical tree as the one that I picked the fruit from? Well, let's look at the process of that fruit being created. The bee went to a random apple tree and in order to collect nectar and pollen to feed its brood, it burrowed into the flower covering itself in pollen in the process and stuffing some of that pollen into the pollen sacs in its legs. It got a bit of what it needed and it flew onto our apple tree, the one we like, and it did the same thing again. It burrowed into the blossom, picked up some nectar, put it into its nectar stomach and brushed some of the pollen that it was already carrying onto the organs of that flower, thereby fertilising the flower. And the fruit that grows then is the result of a union of two different apple trees that were flowering at the same time. A bit like a human baby, a mother and a father, although apple trees are not sex specific, some trees are, apple trees are. But the fruit takes the pollen from one tree, and puts it onto another flower, to create a hybridized fruit. The fruit will bear the characteristics of the tree that carries it, but the seeds, if you were to plant them and grow them on, would produce a tree that has some of the attributes of the tree with the pollen, some of the attributes of the tree that bore the fruit. It wouldn't breed tree. So one of the reasons to graft a tree is to keep all the attributes of the tree that creates the fruit that we like, be that a cider apple tree, be that an eating apple tree, be that a cooking apple tree. By grafting, you keep all the characteristics that you want. Another reason to graft is that in their natural state, most apple trees are incredibly vigorous. They will grow 30 foot tall and the fruit will be 30 foot up. And the only way to pick it is to risk life and limb climbing up ladders to get it. The apples smash themselves to pieces in, woodfall, in windfalls. The tree gets too big. Now if we graft a piece of the tree we like onto the roots of a tree that is inherently smaller, we will get the type of fruit we like and it will be the same size and taste as good and all of that. But the tree will be the size of the tree that had the roots originally. So 
what we do with apple trees is we use a variety of different, normally crab apple roots. And the type of crab apple we use determines the ultimate height and spread of the new apple tree. So I use a variety called MM106. Most of them have weird Latin apple combinations. An MM106 rootstock produces an apple tree three to four metres high, three to four metres wide. So I call it 10 foot high, 10 foot wide. That's perfect for me. I can pick the highest fruit. Um, the branches are high enough that I can mow underneath them and I don't bash my head every time I walk past. That suits me. In a smaller garden, there are types like M9, M26 that produce different sizes, more dwarfing. And you often hear of these things called dwarfing, semi-dwarfing, vigorous rootstocks. Similar things happen with pears, where we often use things like um, quince rootstocks and the like, and also members of the plum family. There are various rootstocks used to produce the size of tree you want. So, two reasons. One, to get a genetically pure tree of the fruit type that we like. Secondly, to control the size of that tree. The third reason, and this may seem a little bit odd, but it's very useful, is that if you find an apple tree you like and you can't determine its variety, if you know how to graft and ask the owner of that apple tree nicely, in spring, you can take a twig and you can produce exactly the same kind of apples without knowing ever what the original named variety of that apple was, which is something we've done here. One of our neighbours has an apple that we particularly like. Unfortunately, it lost its label. They can't remember what type it was, but we produced a copy of it by grafting. So that's the why of grafting. I apologise it's me sat with a big mug of coffee talking to you. But in effect, all we're trying to do in grafting is take one of these. This is an MM106 rootstock. In other words, this is a crab apple tree. And we're going to take the bottom part of that and we're going to stick onto it this little twig. And this little twig is a piece of an apple tree called Ashmead's kernel. We're going to join those together. And the only tools we need to do that are a sharp knife, a little bit of stretchy plastic tape. Although years ago people used other things and frankly the, the plastic tape is optional. We're going to cover how to do that. And we'll join those two together and this will produce us an Ashmead's kernel apple tree that will end up the size and shape that I want. I'm going to leave it there for this video. I apologise, it's just my ugly mug talking. But I'll break this into some manageable chunks and maybe you can fit little bits of it into your day. In the next video, I'm going to show you some of our apple trees and show you how I know that that tree is ready for growth. In the meantime, I'm going to finish my coffee. You have a wonderful day. And we'll talk soon.